what are some basic challenges with this naive rack stack and how exactly do they fail? The first piece is that this stack that we just set up, it is susceptible to bad retrieval. This means that when you actually do, for instance, just top K lookup from the vector database, meaning you're just fetching the relevant documents via embedded similarity and you're just taking K of them, right? You set a constant. You might not necessarily always get back good context. And what does this mean? There's a few aspects of this. One is low precision, where not all the content, not all the chunks in the retrieve set are actually relevant to the question. So you, for instance, if your chunk sizes are too big or your, your top K is too high, you might get a lot of fluff in the retrieve context. And we've seen through a variety of studies where if you actually stuff uh, the context window of different types of LLMs with useless context, it can start getting confused, especially if the relevant um, information is somewhere, you know, lost in the middle of the, of, the, of the context, so to speak. And so that actually causes performance to, to degrade. There's also low recall where not all the relevant chunks are actually retrieved, where you lack enough context for the LLM to actually synthesize an answer because that's actually missing uh, some of the context to actually fully answer the question. And of course, you might also run into cases where some of the data that you retrieve is a little out of date. There's a newer version with a newer timestamp that you should, should have retrieved instead. And there's other aspects too, but these are just a few of the highlights. Another component here is bad response generation. So even if the retrieved results uh, from the vector database are good, your model is still susceptible to different types of issues. If the LLM could hallucinate, it could make up an answer that's not actually in the return context and just choose to ignore it completely. There's irrelevance. Uh, the model could basically just make up an answer that doesn't actually answer the question, but is maybe grounded in the context. And then there's also, of course, like stuff like toxicity bias, uh, adherence to different types of guidelines, even structured outputs, sometimes you might want the output format to be JSON and the model isn't able to generate that. So in terms of thinking about what can we actually do to, to improve these pain points and, and to actually uh, reduce these failures and, and improve metrics, there's a few different components. And the way to think about these components is that when you're building this uh, RAG application or any sort of LLM centered application, you're not just using the LLM, you're actually attaching a lot of components around the LLM. And so it's important to think about all the parameters of each component that you're building around the LLM, because all these things, many of these things actually affect the performance of your downstream system. This includes categories like data, the data that you actually load, how you process chunk the data. Can you actually store additional information beyond raw text chunks? Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about this, for instance, with active loops, uh, deep lake store. This includes the embedding model that you use, right? So this is separate from the LLM. Because this part is used to index and retrieve the data, can we actually optimize the embedding representations so that the data itself actually, it's, it's retrieved better in, in, in more settings because it's actually the embedding models fit your data domain. Can we invest in better retrieval algorithms? Top K embedding lookup is pretty standard. Can we actually think about ways to improve the retrieval performance? And of course, going to the LLM, can we improve stuff like the prompts? Uh, can we use the LLMs for more and more places than just the generation step? Can we use it for reasoning, planning, and generally handle more, uh, more diverse set of questions? This shows the architecture, right? And this just shows the different categories at every stage of this pipeline. And of course, the more complex you make the system, you can add more steps here, but this just means there's more parameters they have to think about to actually try to optimize, not just in terms of performance, but also in terms of cost and latency. And, and you have to weigh all these factors when you're building a production grade application. Right now, the, the natural segue here is we need to actually have a way to measure performance, right? And so we'll spend a few slides talking about evaluation and how to actually evaluate your retrieval augmented generation applications. In this section, we'll talk about evaluation and we'll touch on two main components. One is end-to-end -end evaluation and the other is evaluation of your retrieval system. A key part in building a production grade RAG application is figuring out how to evaluate it because you need a way to actually measure the performance of how well your system is doing. And you also need a good benchmark so that if you try strategies to actually improve the system, you can get quantitative measurements to show that it's actually improved. So how do we properly evaluate a RAG system? You can evaluate in isolation. If you take the different stages of a RAG pipeline, like retrieval and synthesis, you can evaluate them independently. You can also try evaluating the entire system end to end. Let's first talk about evaluation in isolation or, or evaluating retrieval. This is the part where you evaluate the quality of retrieved chunks uh, given the user query. 
This basically is actually independent of using the language model itself. And in fact, information retrieval is not a new field. This is something that's been around for at least a decade, right? And the overall task is that given some sort of user query, you want the return documents to basically surface, you know, what, what the, the most relevant content at the top and the least relevant content at the bottom. And so how do you actually create a data set for this? Here's a few steps. First, you can create a deep lake data set, right? And you can actually store a retrieval, like a question context pair in deep lake. The way you create this data set is you can either do it manually. So you could go in and actually just manually add, given a question, here's the expected set of document IDs or documents I want to actually serve as my evaluation data set. The other is you could do this synthetically too. You can use an, a language model to take in some sort of unstructured data and actually given this unstructured data, generate questions from it. When you generate questions from unstructured documents, then all of a sudden you have the generated question. And of course you have the ground truth context or document. And this serves as the synthetic pairs you can use as your evaluation data set. Once you have your data set, you can try evaluating uh, the quality of your retriever over this data set. Look at the ranked results and see how it uh, holds up to the actual ground truth, the quote unquote ground truth uh, results. And then you can measure them, uh, measure the quality via ranking metrics. You can also evaluate end to end. And what evaluating end to end means that is that given the entire RAG pipeline and a user query, look at the final generator response and give a measurement on how good that final generator response is. There's a few different metrics that you can define here. One is correctness. So the quality of the generated response compared to a ground truth reference response. But sometimes you don't necessarily always need a ground truth. So in terms of label free evaluation, you can compare, for instance, the generated response against the retrieved context, because that is also something that is present in your RAG pipeline. You should be able to get back the set of relevant documents uh, to actually help explain your answer, right? You can also look at the relevance, for instance, whether or not this response actually answers the question at hand. And of course, whether or not it adheres to different types of uh, guidelines. The steps here are also, you know, roughly similar. You can create a data set in, in Deep Lake, whether manually, right? You, sometimes you can just have a human write 50 question answer pairs. You can synthetically generate this through a similar process as what I described. Get an LM to generate questions from context chunks, feed each context chunk plus question into the LM to generate a ground truth answer, right? A synthetic ground truth answer. And then basically given this data set, you can run through a full RAG pipeline on top of this data set and collect evaluation metrics that you define. 